Whenever you guys are ready. Okay, so I'm Mia Bloom. Nicole Johnson. I'm Zach Hoffman. And for our team, we decided to go with the Mexico City Dragons. That's our logo we have on the right side. Oh, this one, me? Oh. <laughs> for our introduction, we're going to uh, talk about our executive summary, our background to the plan, our environmental analysis, marketing objectives, our marketing strategies, resourcing requirements, and our, and our ending evaluation. Um, so let's start with our executive summary, um, the target audience. Um, popular, it's popular Mexican-owned companies, soccer fans, and Mexico City com um, community. Um, the objectives for the marketing plan are to create a popular and profitable organization and grow strength in the community. Um, some of our strategies include constant engagement with the community, partnerships and endorsements, and social media. Um, our budget overview is looking around three million to start up, and um, the timeline for this to make it happen would be to um, join the league in 2025, since um, their season just ended this year, like literally last month, so I don't know if one year would be too quick or not, but 2025 is probably what we're selling for. Now, our background to the plan. Uh, the marketing plan is essential for the Mexico City Dragons because we want to achieve our objectives. We want to be the most successful team that we can. We want to build a strong brand that we can we're make promises to people. We're going to provide that for them. And we want to engage with fans and our sponsors. Uh, a lot of people love soccer in Mexico, so we want to make sure that that's a very important part of our plan. We want to generate revenue and become popular. We want to stay at the, at the top and stay competitive in the dynamic and fast-paced sports industry. For, for our environmental analysis, some of our strengths would be uh, the first American-based professional organization, so that should bring in a lot of fans and sponsors. Um, community engagement, we we're looking to do something just like doing something for kids, maybe a soccer camp or anything like that, just to get the community involved to just bring in more fans, obviously. And soccer is a part of culture in Mexico, so it's like very populated based out of there. Um, some of the weaknesses having it in Mexico City would be the weather, uh, heavy traffic, and poverty, because a lot of people in such a small little area, but in poverty because it's a little bit dangerous. Um, some of the opportunities that we would have, with, uh, we can influence other professional organizations to hopefully just like anything positive we can do for the program and for our community, they have follow up on it. And it gives them opportunities for Mexican-based athletes to try out, especially soccer players. Some of the threats that we had would be air pollution, water shortages, and safety issues. So our marketing objectives, um, we have specific goals, um, which would achieve attendance half of Estadio Azteca. That's where we would play. Estadio Azteca was just like one of the biggest stadiums in the world. Um, we would like to cover at least half the stadium since it's so big and it's a um, new franchise. Um, we would like to recruit talent to achieve at least above 500 record. So kicking off our inaugural season with a winning record would be huge. Um, our measurable goals would be achieve over 100,000 followers on social media. Um, a lot of the um, women's soccer team pages have around that many followers like the um, Gotham team that just won the championship this year has a little bit over 100,000, so we would like to hit that mark. Um, the community engagement, which is track growth of kids' camps and interactions. So just having a bunch of kids' camps and uh, track the interactions. Our table goals would be to reach top five most profitable organizations in the league. Um, I think we can do that since we're based out of Mexico City, and it's a huge deal in Mexico soccer, especially in women's sports. That would be really big. And um, realistic goals would be the information that we provided can create a team. Um, time bound goals would be have a full respected team ready for 2025 season. And our market, marketing strategies would be the first American based professional sports team. There isn't a lot of um, like NBA teams, major league teams that are outside of the United States. So it would be the first um, organization in Mexico City that is represented by the United States, like a league. Um, it's the most popular sport in Mexico, like we said. People love soccer. They're, there's a professional team there. They're, want, they're gonna want to go see it. Uh, promote the team through social media, like Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Like we said before, 
uh, the team that won the championship last year, they have over 100,000 followers on Instagram alone. So I think that we could achieve that on at least one of those platforms. Um, host an opening night at Estadio Azteca. Like we said, it's one of the most popular um, arenas to play at. Get the community involved, bring people out, see, meet the team, just get get them out there. And football staff of well-known female soccer players represents women and the sport. You know, get a coach that people know that was really good at soccer, kind of bring a name in for them, and just keep it the ball rolling. As far as our resources and requirements go, um, this is our budget breakdown. So the budget overview, overview is around three million, so to break it down all the way would be like 350,000 for the stadium, 54,000 for um, player salary, assuming there's 21 people on the roster. So that equals about 1.1 million, roughly. Um, 55K for a 10-man staff, that includes like coaches, trainers, and all the other stuff. Um, 100,000 for any necessary equipment, so jerseys, cleats, gear, travel suits, stuff like that. And then 866,000, 100,000 for any uh, additional needs. Um, the stadium charges for parking would allow us to create deals with uh, a price to play at the stadium. And the stadium roof is not retractable, so supplies, we would need supplies to take care of the grass field, so like, so we could get turf and stuff. And our additional needs would be just concession stand, employees, reps, and game staff. We have break them up too. So our evaluation would be, our purpose is to attract investment for scaling operations. Um, our evaluation method would be the combination of income approach and market approach, which is comparable company analysis. Um, financials would be revenue projections, cost net analysis, and cash flow forecasts. And um, our appraisal expertise would be to utilize a professional valuation expert for accuracy. And then our conclusion, uh, it's time for the latest and greatest expansion team. We believe that any partner in this process will provide great opportunities no matter what company it is. We want to break boundaries for not only women's sports, but also American professional organizations. If we just start one, comp uh, one team out of the United States, it could create a trend and possibly make more teams want to do it. And the sports world is constantly changing, allowing for constant development of athletes in their respective sports. We believe that this team in this area can make a great difference in not just women's soccer, but any sport that wants to do it. Great, thank you. Uh, so I just have a couple questions, uh, follow-up questions. So, um, so Mia, why, um, what made you guys, uh, what made you guys think of Mexico City as the possible uh, reason for the expansion, and um, why, uh, what, why do you think that they should um, uh, agree to make this the 16th franchise? Well, Mexico City was my idea, mm -hmm. so I'm just put that out there. Um, this the specific for Mexico City was just like I don't know that area in soccer. I feel as though if we started an organization in that specific area, it would bring in a lot of activity and just definitely revenue mm -hmm. if we if we made the program. So it was all that, and then I just knew about the whole stadium thing. Like that was one of the biggest stadiums in the world, so that'd be a nice place to have soccer. Field. So, uh, you guys are going to rent the study of Azteca? Yeah. Correct. Um, so, are you, your long term goals, are you guys just going to continue renting out that facilities, or eventually are you guys going to um, uh, have your own women's soccer specific stadium that might be like at an attendance level that might be more appropriate for NWSL? Probably, for yeah, probably once we reach our um, financial goal of like raising money and everything for the mm -hmm. team. Stadio Azteca can be its own thing, and we can have our own thing and stadium and promote that to be our new like, you know, stadium in Mexico City. Um, so, uh, so what one strength that I think you guys have is the, that you're Mexican based and that soccer is so embedded into the culture. Um, have you guys thought of uh, marketing towards um, Mexican Americans? Particularly in your road games, um, in order to draw in away fans and collect revenue that way. Yeah, that was one of our big things. Just like, since it's in a different country, how are we gonna get like 
people from America to be fans, mm -hmm. also be, like, and also in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, I think the big thing is just staying true to like, we want to, the people we want to be our fan base is not just them, we want to be everyone, obviously. So I think the way we have to approach it is like start where we are and then kind of grow, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Right. Like we want to get to people around us, obviously, first, but people in America love soccer too. So I think we could easily attract both to be both fan base. So as far as your marketing strategy goes, because you, you guys want to emphasize uh, that you are Mexico's team, right? Uh, so have you guys thought of any um, strategies that you could do to target that particular audience, uh, both in Mexico and in the US? I mean, definitely through social media. Mm -hmm. um, like at uh, specific nights, obviously like what she said, like on the road. Mm -hmm. you know, promote that through social media because there's a lot of Hispanics in America and that love soccer. Soccer is the most popular sport in the world, apparently. So, I mean, reaching out to them on social media shouldn't be that like difficult. And especially when we go to, back home to Mexico, we um, have like like, um, like boosters and stuff and like fundraisers, like and just other. Specific nights, like to where we just have like a lot of people come out and like do fun activities and stuff like that. So, and, um, have um, also add on to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like a marketing strategy I would consider, but like we mentioned, hiring professional women soccer athletes that could be like coaches or on the staff. Like growing up, I know like I've watched every girl play basketball. Like they could be from different countries, so like. Growing up, you're gonna watch the best players. Mm -hmm. So I feel like having that kind of person on your staff could also like kind of be a marketing strategy. Like, oh, I want to go see this person now. They're a coach. I want to see them. Maybe I can meet them. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that could be considered like also a strategy, right. sort of. Yeah, there was a one um, podcast that I put in the list of uh, on the assignment, and it was said like easiest way to market a women's sports is to focus on the individual athletes mm -hmm. rather than the team. Yeah, you know, people have affiliation towards. Uh, a Mia Hamm instead of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Atlanta Dream or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so y you guys talked a little bit about um, both in your weaknesses and your threats, uh, environmental factors. Um, so, could you guys talk a little bit more about uh, how uh, the weather and particularly travel uh, might affect this team? As far as the travel, it's, um, it's heavy traffic. So say it could affect our team, but even the opponent, mm -hmm. the opposing teams, because say if they say if they left early or something like that, and then it's rush hour in Mexico City, and then now they're late to the game or trying to get to the stadium. So that's one way we can affect it for uh, travel. As far as the weather and the air pollution goes, it's like, we don't know how it is over there, but like, say it goes like so crazy to where you just had to stop the game, and it wasn't smart or necessary for you to be playing in air pool with the weather, or the weather was too hot, or something like that. Mm -hmm. you know, just like. um, and then, it, um, as far as like travel from, because there's going to be an additional costs that you guys will face that not many other teams face in terms of. Um, yeah. Traveling from Mexico City to opponents. Right. Yeah. Um, so, have you guys thought about uh, how that might affect your bottom line? Yeah, for additional needs, that's what we were kind of thinking to put it under, like that extra margin to have that money for. Because mm -hmm. we're, I mean, I'm not too familiar about how they would like go about it. Mm -hmm. Because not, it's never been a problem before. Like, you're always traveling somewhere in America or mm -hmm. like, the occasional like, NFL game that's in Europe. Mm -hmm. So, it's kind of like if you're getting players from America, are they going to need? Mm -hmm. It just depends on like where they're from, I guess, with like the process. I feel like it's like a step by step, like go right. along with as the, like you're building a team, you'll figure it out as like it's going on. Figure mm -hmm. out what things you need for certain like people. Um, what um, so what what types of uh, businesses, what types of organizations are you guys uh, seeking? Which uh, would sort of align well with um, your uh, team's values and the target markets that you're trying to um, 
to reach. Are you talking like bigger companies or? Yeah, so like, uh, like I'm talking companies. about shirt sponsors. Um, I'm talking about like teams that might advertise within your stadium. Like, which, what, what, what companies might uh, align well with you guys? Well, on the um, the area around the stadium, there's a Nike store mm -hmm. that like already sells stuff like with the stadium. So we were thinking that that'd be a good company. Just like a bigger brand now to start with. Mm -hmm. um, I think we mentioned like Mexican-owned companies as well. Like if you look up like Walmart, there's like a Mexican version of Walmart mm -hmm. that's only in Mexico. So I feel like that could be a good target for our team to start off with. Like kind of like get the community interactive with and like build that off first. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like it's also like very historical the stadium. So I feel like we kind of just want to focus on like our city first. Okay. Like companies and stuff like that. Because there's an Nike already, so I feel like that's obviously they know what it is if it's already on the, the area. Uh, have you guys looked into, um, you know, women's sports or women's soccer, particularly in Mexico, and what its popularity looks like? Okay, that's, that's fine. Um, yeah. Part like soccer is a. And we know, like, we look up statistics of, like, soccer, mm -hmm. just, like, in general, not specifically women. Okay. Um, what, um, ask you. um the, the money that, so you are, you're, you're pitching to different companies that are within class, so uh, the money that uh, you might receive, the revenue that you might receive for that, where would that go in terms of your resource requirements? Um, what do you think is your biggest need? Because mm -hmm. we're a new team, mm -hmm. so I feel like that's gonna like you want to get the best players you can, mm -hmm. and obviously starting off it's gonna be hard, mm -hmm. but I think that's gonna be the biggest thing is being able to provide for the players. Um, how uh, can you talk a little bit more about how uh, you might try to um, interact with or uh, you know, make yourself part of the community. I know you talked about community engagement, but could you guys speak a little bit more about that? Well, one of the ways was saying that, say not during the season, or even during the season, we could have like, well for certain games, we could have like, like a Spain day, obviously. So like say they can come, like we give them free tickets, just go into the community. Um, as far as that, we was also saying like how we can have kids soccer camps so we can start up with the players and everything so we can engage and engage like that and just even going to the community and like giving out food and like all like all that stuff is like definitely ways that we can we can be a help to the community and like let them know that we're there for them. Um, could you go back to uh, your first slide uh, your opening slide yeah okay so let's let's talk about uh, the visual representation. Okay, um, you know why? What made you choose those colors? Um, and could you talk a little bit about the logo that you created? Okay, so <laughs> I went with the colors of the Mexico flag, mm -hmm. like red, white, green. Mm -hmm. um, I put a slab of twenty twenty three only because we obviously like pitching this. We want to like be established as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. um, for the dragon, I wasn't too sure what to go with. I didn't want to go with anything too scary to like send people away. But something like simple just to get it out there obviously it doesn't have to be the logo we use, but um, yeah, my whole thought process was just making something that is appealing to the community mm -hmm. and that people are like, oh, Lord, that's a cool logo. Like I would wear that on a shirt. So the reason you chose red, white, and uh, green um, is to identify mm -hmm. yourself with yeah. Mexico as a whole. Yeah. Great, great. Um, I think I think that's all I have. Is there uh, anything that you, um, you know, think might um, convince these companies to invest in your franchise? Because we're the first yeah. team that's going to be outside the United States. Because like you know like how NBA teams and like NFL teams like like the bigger league teams in America are always talking about. Mexico, mm -hmm. Europe, the NBA always has games in Mexico, they're about to have, they have games in the NFL too, so 
I was like just putting our foot down and just being the first organization to do it. And I feel like that's a big step and then other people will follow and the organization will buy in. And in your understanding, like how has how have those um, experiences gone well when Major Baseball or NFL or NBA have gone into Mexico? It's, I, mean, it's, I think it's a huge success. They sell out every single time. A lot of fans, fans from America, fans from there, especially um, just introduces them to the sport. And especially having a team of their own, I feel like they would love that, especially American based. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would be a huge deal to them. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I just thought about, did you guys, uh, have you guys considered um, like a tourism aspect of it? Uh, and maybe trying to uh, reach out to um, like the official tourism bureau of Mexico, uh, Mexico City, in order to draw American fans to travel um, and um, attend games in another country, make it sort of a destination. Yeah. I never really thought about that, but that's a really good point. All right, cool. Great job, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Pick our company, pick our team up.